Welcome to Mystery Islands. The ancient astronaut theory can be thought of as a giant jigsaw puzzle. In my original DVD, The Stands of Time, I gave you the outer borders of the puzzle, a general overview. With this DVD, I'm filling in each individual puzzle piece so my viewers can gain more clarity and understanding of this complex topic. I like to think of these DVDs as an adventure in the manner of Indiana Jones. But this time it's a real adventure. I'm bringing you the best hard evidence I can and combining it with the best speculation of experts in this field to understand the ancient astronaut theory. So let's start by visiting our first mystery island in the South Pacific, known as Nan Madal. In the far western corner of the Pacific Ocean, near Malaysia, there can be found the mysterious ruins of an ancient city. Long ago, an unknown group created 92 artificial islands that were built with millions of tons of heavy basalt rock on the island of Pompeii. It was an extremely difficult task to move these rocks into place, as you can only access this coastal area by boat. If primitive natives had brought these, these stones over from the far side of the island, surely the stones, some weighing up to 25 tons, would have sunk their canoes. This bizarre city is called Nan Madal and features dozens of structures built of long basalt logs. Channels of water similar to Venice allow access to the islets by boats. However, the buildings don't have any windows or doorways. There are very few remnants of human activities such as furniture, utensils, or tools. Not a single carving or petroglyph or any other ritual idols have been found at Nan Madal. Much of the area is now covered by encroaching jungle, but the city used to appear as a well-planned group of towers and walls next to smaller rectangular buildings. There are artificial lakes that are connected by the canals spread out over 10 miles. The layout indicates a complex architectural plan rather than a group of buildings built randomly by primitive natives. Let's explore the legendary mythology surrounding the Hall of Records, an ancient library buried somewhere near the Great Pyramid of Giza. We know that the Sphinx is aligned to the constellation of Leo, not today, but back in the year 10,500 BC. Researchers like Graham Hancock have studied the Sphinx closely and believe the tremendous weathering patterns from water indicate that it is much older than the traditional date of 3000 BC and more likely dates back to 10,000 BC. He has compared the Sphinx to mud and clay structures around Egypt that date back to 3000 BC. And these structures do not reveal great erosion from water. Remember, we are talking about exploring an area of the world, Egypt, which is a very dry desert region with minimal rainfall, and yet the Sphinx displays significant erosion from heavy rainfall, indicating it was built before the Great Flood. The Hall of Records supposedly contained hundreds of papyrus scrolls that revealed the secrets of the lost continent of Atlantis. The fact that the Great Pyramids of Giza is also aligned to a star constellation back in 10,500 BC, the Belt of Orion, is an indicator that the citizens of Atlantis may have built the Great Pyramids at that time and provided the secrets of their civilization as a time capsule for the future. The Aztecs believed in a large pantheon of deities, over 1,600 of them. They can be grouped into general categories. The principal deities were Quetzalcoatl, the benevolent teacher, and Tezcatlipoca, a warlike god. They had many gods of fertility, fire deities, sky gods, heavenly gods, underworld gods, and many more categories. Is it true that the Aztecs engaged in cannibalism? According to early Spanish documents, it was not a common tradition but they did participate in cannibalism as part of sacred rituals. In the Mayan culture, the flesh of human sacrifice was considered sacred food to be offered up to the gods. This was most likely a tradition implemented by Tezcatlipoca, who was the more controlling type of god. They believed in a creation story of five worlds. The first was created by giants and overseen by Tezcatlipoca, but it was ended when Quetzalcoatl caused the giants to be devoured by jaguars. The second world was ruled by Quetzalcoatl, but was destroyed by the wind, and the people were turned into monkeys. The third world was ruled by the rain god Talak, 
but was destroyed by fire, and humans were turned into birds. The fourth world was overseen by a female goddess, but destroyed by a flood, and the inhabitants turned into fish. According to legend, both brothers, Quetzalcoatl and Tezcatlipoca, created the current fifth world together. They fight an earth monster together, at one point turning into snakes, and at another transforming into two trees. The snake and tree symbology bears an interesting resemblance to the Garden of Eden tale with the two warring brothers, Enki and Enlil, as explained in my first Sands of Time DVD. The Mayan Empire flourished in the eastern part of Mexico, known as the Yucatan area. The Popol Vuh was a sacred text of the Mayans, written down around 1550 AD. The original manuscript was copied by a priest in Spanish, but is now lost. It tells the story of the creation of Earth, beginning with only water and darkness. Then the gods created the animals. There is a description of the original gods as having feathered wings, but dwelling in the water. So they were amphibious, with an ability to fly. Two of the main gods, Gukumats and Tepu, went through a great period of trial and error to create humans out of mud. They were generally unhappy with the first group of humans and destroyed them with a great flood. Later they created an upgraded version of humans who were smarter and had more knowledge. The Popova traces the history of their royal families to these ancient gods in a similar fashion to the Sumerian clay tablets in the Middle East. 